What does it look like? It's a big door. It's mm. old. Mm -hmm. What color is it? Brown. Mm -hmm. It's got metal hinges that are shaped like, like almost like long triangles. Mm -hmm. How do you open this door? It's got a big uh, metal knob. Mm -hmm. Does it go towards you or away from you? It goes in, away oh. from me. All right. So go ahead and begin opening that door. And as you go through, Tell me what you see on the other side. Blue. What do you see? Blue. Blue. Just blue light. Beautiful. Let's find out some more about that blue. Keep stepping through and tell me what it feels like. Just calm. Mm hmm. Peaceful. Mm hmm. Do you feel that this blue? Is indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Outdoors. Do you feel that perhaps it's daytime or nighttime? Daytime. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that there's a surface where this blue is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you can walk through this place? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's go walking through this blue. And tell me how it feels. It's peaceful, easy, quiet. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to look at your feet. See if you could see your feet. What do you imagine them to be like? My feet. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's find out where it is that you are, where this blue place is. Continue walking through it and you can use your breath to move that blue away so that you can see what's behind it, what this blue is hiding. Use your breath to blow it away. Allow the images to come. What's the first impression that you get of what would be on the other side of the blue? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Does the blue feel like something that is protecting you, perhaps? Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's communicate with this blue. I'd like for you to use your mind to connect and let's find out who or what this blue is. I'd like for you to trust your impression. And what's the first thing that pops into your mind as to what the blue is? Safe. Mm -hmm. The safety, safe place. Mm hmm. Let's find out if anybody else is with you in this safe place. I'd like for you to send out with your mind, like a call out to see who else is there with you. What's the first impression that you get? Somebody's laughing. Somebody's laughing. Mm hmm. Who's laughing at you? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like it's a male presence or a female? Male. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like it's young or old? Young. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Uh huh. So tell me what <laughs> what they're laughing about. I don't know, but it's making me laugh. Mm hmm. Ask them if that's what the purpose is to make you laugh. Yes, they're watching me. Mm-hmm. They're watching you? Mm-hmm. How many do you feel are laughing at you? Just one. Just one. All right, so let's ask who that is. Ask this male presence for a name. What's 
the first thing that pops into your mind? Custard. Custard. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> what does Custard want to say? I don't know. He's too busy laughing. Okay. So let's find out what your grandfather wants to say to you. Is he your guide now? Because he's been watching me. Mm -hmm. what, does he have to, what does he have to say? I don't know. I got real serious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's find out from Custer what he wants to say. Would you allow me to speak with him? Yes. All right. So I'm going to count from one to three. I'm going to tap your forehead and just allow Custer to speak. One, and two, and three. Good morning, Custer. How are you? Fine. Mm -hmm. Tell me why you were laughing at your granddaughter. She's funny. She's funny. Mm -hmm. She's so serious. She's so serious. So you wanted her to laugh a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is life supposed to be serious, Custer? No. No. Tell her about it. It's supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. Journey. Joyful. Was your life like that, Custer? Not always. Mm -hmm. But what happened after you transitioned out of your body? Did you see things differently? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Where are you now, Custer? Are you in the light? I'm in the blue. You're in the blue. Okay. So were you able to go back to Source after you left? Or are you still hanging around? I think I'm hanging around. Mm. What's the reason why you haven't left? I don't know. Mm. Are you stuck here, Custer? I don't feel like I'm stuck. You just choose to be here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Custer, when you're kind of hanging around, who do you hang around with? Rosie. Mm-hmm. And do you watch her, or you, do you kind of attach to your body? Just watch her. You watch her. Do you influence her in any way? She's hard to influence. Mm. So, what have you been telling her all this time? I try to keep her happy. Mm -hmm. What do you do to keep her happy? Show her things. Mm -hmm. What have you shown her lately? The life's not all bad. Mm -hmm. So tell it's me more. It's your point of view. It's your point of view, the perspective of it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you like Rosie's point of view to be from now on? She's so sad. Mm -hmm. What's keeping, keeping her sad, Custer? I don't know. Do you see anyone around her that keeps her sad? No. No? She just makes herself sad? Yes. Mm -hmm. Custer, are you with anybody else in that blue? Mm -mm. No, just by yourself? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be able to help her more, Custer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because living there in that blue, it seems to me you're kind of stuck in that, aren't you? Kind of comfortable. Mm. But comfortable isn't always progressing, is it? No. And all, so all souls have to progress. It seems to me that you got, kind of got stuck in that blue and felt comfortable but didn't keep going. It was quite comfortable compared to where I was. Mm. Would you like to make it more comfortable, Custer? Yes. All right. So, Custer, I'd like for you to look inside of you. There's a spark of light there. Tell me when you find that spark. It's by your heart. I found it. Mm -hmm. This is the light from where you came. The, life of the, the light of the Creator. All you have to do is focus on that light and make it bigger. <coughs> and tell me when you make it so big that it takes over your whole body. It's taking 
Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be in that white light? More comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to stretch that light now out past your body and make that entire blue area white. Send that light out to as far as you can reach. And tell me what opens up for you now. How does it feel to be in that white? Good. Mm -hmm. This is where you need to be, Custer. Feels good to be in that white, doesn't it? Yes. All right. So what would you like to tell Rosie before you go home? I love her. Mm -hmm. And let me have, take a deep breath in. Rosie, what would you like to tell your grandfather? I miss him. Mm -hmm. Would you like to give him a big hug before he yes. leaves? All right, go ahead and give him a big hug. <laughs> give him a big hug. Stop. Mm -hmm. What does he say? He's bearding me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Kostira, what would you like to tell your granddaughter? I miss her. She says something else. Mm -hmm. All right. So are you ready to go now, Kostira? Yes. All right. So go ahead and release yourself from this existence here. Take all of the energy that belongs to you, and let's follow that white light to its origin. Find it all the way. And I'm going to ask my archangels to surround you and take you right home and tell me when you get there. Tell me what you see, Custer. Light. Lots mm -hmm. and lots of light. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody there to greet you? Uh, I don't see anyone. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll be, you'll be greeted by your, your own guide. Go ahead and go towards that light. And may the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you very much. Very good. So now I'd like for you to take a deep breath in and let me connect with your higher self. I'm going to count from one to three. And let's connect. One, two, and three. Feel your higher self coming in. Good afternoon. Uh -huh. I know that you could have shown rosy different lifetimes today. Why did you first show her her grandfather? Was he stuck here? Yes. Mm-hmm. So how is he now? He's better. He's better. Very good. Very good. Now I know that Rosie didn't have a very good experience the first time she went into hypnosis. Can you tell her what happened there? What was going on there? That she panicked. Was she not ready for it? No. Mm, how about now? Yes. Yes. So Rosie has a lot of questions. The main one being, what's her life purpose here? To grow. To grow. Mm -hmm. So tell her how it is that she's growing. She learns other people's perspective. Mm -hmm. She carries too much with her. What does she carry so much? She won't let it go. Hmm. So what does what happens with all of this that she carries on her? Just weighs her down. And weighs her down. In what ways can you tell her? She's tired. Mm -hmm. She's. She just feels like she can't keep going. Mm -hmm. Does she need to carry on all of this? No. Mm -hmm. It seems like she's become a, like a spiritual pack mule, hasn't she? Yes. Loading herself up too heavy. So what recommendation would you like to give Rosie now about that? Let it go. Mm -hmm. Will she be able to grow without all of this? Yes. Mm. It seems to me it's almost like a a plant that has too much weight on it and can't grow out of the ground. She needs to flourish. She feels responsible for everybody. Mm -hmm. Does she need to feel responsible? No. No. 
she explains, she takes this one. Mm -hmm. So how can she achieve this purpose if she's constantly packing everybody else's stuff? She won't let go. Mm -hmm. And why won't she let go? Mm-hmm. So let's find out from her. I'd like for you to have a conversation with Ro Rosie's conscious mind. Let's find out why the conscious mind is not letting it go. I'm going to count from one to three and let me speak with the conscious mind. One, two, and three. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Why is it that you're holding on to all of this stuff? feel responsible. Mm -hmm. Tell me why you feel responsible for somebody else. Because I cause them pain. Mm -hmm. In what way? Uh, because they care about me and I let them down. Mm -hmm. Is it your responsibility to hold on to somebody else's stuff? No, I just feel responsible for it. Mm-hmm. For causing somebody's pain? Yeah. Well, that's your perspective, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. As a nurse, do you think you cause people pain? No. No. But sometimes as a nurse, you do painful things, don't you? Yeah. You have to put little foleys in there, which is not a really good, <laughs> a really fun thing to do, is there? And sometimes you have to give people IVs, which hurt. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to move them around in ways that may hurt them. Do you think that they're taking that as a way that you're hurting them? No. No. So why would you think that you need to take the responsibility for their pain? Not their pain. Mm. My family's pain. Well, it's the same thing. It's the same. They're my family. Mm. But actually, everybody is your family. Mm. We're all one. Anybody. I don't hurt them like that. It's a temporary pain, and then it makes them feel better. All right, so let's talk to your higher self. One, two, and three. Higher self? She says that it's, just, it's different, the type of pain. What would you like to say about that? She doesn't see that as pain. Mm-hmm. She's talking about emotional pain. Mm -hmm. Is she causing people emotional pain? She has. Mm -hmm. Don't we all cause people emotional pain? Yes. That's the only way we grow, isn't it? Yes. To learn the difference. And if her purpose in life is to grow, don't you think that she needs to have experience like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. She just can't let it leave it. She mm -hmm. can't let it go. Mm -hmm. It's like... She knows what she's doing, and she feels the pain she causes. Mm -hmm. It just hurts, and she hangs on to it. How can she possibly grow anymore if she continues to pack all of this weight on her? She's not growing. Mm -hmm. So she's not fulfilling her purpose right now? No. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend? Do we need to clean house? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you allow me to do this exercise so we can get rid of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Rosie, I'd like for you to imagine now as if you were in the hospital. And when sometimes you give people enemas, those people <laughs> have a really, really nasty, nasty outcome. Isn't that right? Well, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But some of these people feel very bad about the fact that they've They've done this, and they're embarrassed. It's the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. The whole purpose of it, but you see it that way, isn't it? To get rid of all of that. Mm -hmm. They see it as something that's embarrassing, that's hard to do. And you as a nurse see it as something very necessary. They need to get all that out in order for them to get better. Right? Yes. But imagine if they were to do that and you were to keep that bedpan around to remind them of how nasty all that stuff is. 
It would be pretty nasty, wouldn't it? It'd be pretty cruel. Uh huh. It is very cruel. So, what is it that you do after they have a bowel movement? You clean them up. You clean them up. You flush it. And you, and you flush spray it. Spray some air freshener. Exactly. Because sometimes we all have nasty things that we need to go through, which cause pain. Now, it may not have caused you pain, but it caused them pain, didn't it? Yes. To try to get that, yeah. So can you imagine your own life, how you must be inside with all of that stuff that you've been holding on to? And it's just going in there and it's fermenting. It's getting toxic from all of those years of having all of those emotions and not letting it go. And here your higher self is saying, you got to do it. You got to let it go. So you as a nurse looking at yourself, what would you recommend? Then I'll let it go. Yeah, we need a heavy duty enema, don't we? We got to let that go. And then what are we going to do with all of those emotions once we get them out? What do we do with that? Throw it away. Right. And we're going to spray a little bit of air freshener, aren't we? Because <laughs> it's pretty nasty stuff. So I'm going to put my hand on your heart because that is where all of your emotions are stored. And the enema is going to be right through, right through here, through my hand. And we're going to have a direct line where you can now begin to evacuate all of those emotions that you have been holding on through your entire life. Begin to get all of those out. All of those guilt. All of those remorse. All of those things that you didn't know any better. Feel them all coming out as you grew all of the pain that you went through. Pull them all out. You don't need that anymore. Feel it coming out. Some of it is painful. Some of it is harder than others. But we need to get them all out. Tell me when we are totally empty. That's good. Mm -hmm. Pull it all out. We have a huge bedpan. <laughs> That bedpan is going right up. It's out. All right, so we're going to take all that out. And we're going to flush that bedpan, no more. And now you feel completely empty. So now we need to get something nice and nourishing in there to begin healing all of that. What would you like to put in that empty space? Compassion. Let's put a lot of compassion in there. Feel it coming out. And this, the main part, is compassion for yourself. Understanding that you are doing the best you can. Feel it coming in. And tell me when it's totally full. All right, I'm going to touch your forehead and seal that in there. Don't let it out. What else would we like to put in there? Peace. Mm -hmm. Let's put lots of peace in there. Feel it going in there. Feel it rushing through every cell of your body. Total peace every breath you take. You feel that beautiful, blissful, peaceful feeling knowing that all is well. Nothing to hold on to anymore totally at ease and we're going to seal that in there what else would you like to put in there kindness mm -hmm. to put kindness in but kindness for yourself because you cannot give what you don't have so let's put a lot of kindness to yourself knowing that everything that you put in your body it will be kind to yourself, every thought that you have about yourself will be kind. Everything that you drink will be kind and the way that you look at yourself will be kind because as you become kinder and kinder to yourself, 
you will be able to give more and more of that to others. So let's seal that in there. How does that feel now? Much better. Mm -hmm. So just take a deep breath in and let's have all of that settle into all of those cells. Spread it out from head to toe as all of these new beautiful emotions acclimate themselves to your body, mind, and soul. And let me speak with your higher self again. How does, how does Rosie look now? Lighter. Very good. So she wants to know how she can best connect with you. She needs to get still and be quiet. Mm -hmm. Get still. And what would you recommend? A quiet, dark place. Mm -hmm. A quiet, dark place. Does she need to do this at home? Does she do it at work? At home. Mm -hmm. Very good. So what would you like for her to do in order for her to connect with you? What what little ritual would you like her to do? Just be still, mm -hmm. be quiet, breathe. Very good. And she'll hear your voice. She won't necessarily hear my voice. She'll hear thoughts. Thoughts. And that's where your thoughts are. That's where the voice is. Very good. She says that she feels like life is such a struggle all the time. She makes it that way. Mm -hmm. Is that because of all of this stuff that we had inside of her? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now that we are totally at ease, hold on please. So she says that she has to struggle all the time. She was full of all, all of that. So now what would you like to tell her about this? Relax. Relax. Very good. What would you like to tell her? She wants to know what you have to say. She's okay. Mm -hmm. She thinks she needs some tragedy. She goes from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Slow down, enjoy life. Why does she feel so disconnected to others? She puts walls up to protect herself. Mm. So what would you like to tell her about that? That it's safe. Mm -hmm. That others don't hurt her. She hurts herself. Mm -hmm. So how can we break down this wall today? Just tear it down. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we do something to tear it down today? Can we do a little exercise? Yes. All right. So take a deep breath in like we speak with Rosie and Rosie I'd like for you to look inside of your body and tell me where these walls are where have you built up these walls around my chest mm -hmm. my heart. around your heart all right what does the wall look like it's a big stone wall mm -hmm. solid mm -hmm. impenetrable mm -hmm. how thick is this wall very thick mm -hmm. kind of like the old castle walls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what else do you see around Nothing. Nothing. Just the wall. Just the wall. All right. So we're going to have to break down this wall. What would you think would be the best thing to use to break down these walls? It's not very strong. Mm, okay. Just looks it. Okay. So you kind of fake it people out, don't you? You can just blow it away. Mm, all right. So go ahead and start using the tool to start getting rid of this wall. What would you like to use? No, I don't need a tool. Mm -hmm. Just blow it away? Mm -hmm. All right. So tell me what your heart looks like now that we've taken this wall down. Does it look healthy? 
Now, know. what color is that heart? It's like a dark red brown. Mm -hmm. What color should it be? Bright red. All right. So we're going to use something now to brighten up that heart and bring it back to health. You can either use a light source or you can use water. What would you like to use? Light. Mm, all right. So let's bring in that big fire hose of light. And let's start putting that light all around that heart. And as you do, and notice how the color begins to change. Notice how that color changes. And tell me when it's completely back to health. That's bright red. Mm -hmm. Very good. And see if it's flexible enough. Very good. Very good. Is there anything else around the heart that we need to take care of today, or do you feel that your heart is healthy now? There, the heart, my heart's healthy. It's just there's a pressure pain. Mm -hmm. Where's this pressure? Right above it. Mm -hmm. What does that pressure look like? Just gray and yeah. heavy. All right, so let me speak to that gray and heavy pressure. I'm going to bring it up, 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 up. You can express your now, yourself now. Are you male or female, female energy? Male. Male. What may I call you? What name can I call you by? Do you have a name? Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. Can I call you Mr. Gray? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Gray, how long have you been there with, with this beautiful woman? A long time. Mm -hmm. When did you first attach to her? When she was in her teens. Mm -hmm. What was she doing to catch your attention? She was easy target. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Just very open and naive. Mm -hmm. And what were you looking for, Mr. Gray? A place to stay. Mm -hmm. What happened to your body? I don't know. How old are you? I don't know. Do you feel very old? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Gray, did someone send you to her, perhaps? No. Did someone create you? Emotion. Emotions, okay. So were you created by her? No. Whose emotions? Her mother's. Her mother's, mm-hmm. So what was happening with her mother that these emotions were created? She, she wasn't happy. She wasn't happy. Her mother wasn't happy? No. Mm-hmm. So what kind of emotions are we talking about? Anger. Mm-hmm. What else? Hurt. Mm-hmm. Shame. Mm-hmm. So was her mother directing these emotions towards Rosie? Inadvertently, yes. Mm -hmm. So let's find out a little bit about how you have been affecting her with all of these emotions. What is she feeling now that she has all of these in her body? She's scared, anxious. Mm -hmm. What else? Always anxious. Always anxious. Mr. Gray, did you, sh did you, were you trying to talk to her when she had her last hypnosis appointment? Was that you? That was making her panic? I don't know. Okay. How, well, how do you make her feel? Uncomfortable. You're comfortable. Uncomfortable. Oh, you're uncomfortable. 
Well, it seems to me, Mr. Gray, that you have a very uncomfortable position if you were created to, out of anger, hurt, and shame. Wouldn't you like to be more comfortable? Yes. What kind of emotions would you like instead? Happy, joyous, and free. Ah, but you see, you can't be that if that's the what you are. The only one who can give you permission to do that is Rosie. Would you like her to give you permission to change? Yes. All right, so let me I'm going to tap your forehead now. Rosie, do you realize that you have been carrying all of this anxious and scared feeling from Mr. Gray? Anger, hurt, shame. Would you like to transform that today? We don't need to hold on to that gray anymore. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's give Mr. Gray a new role. Being that he was created with thoughts, you can now cre recreate him and transform him into something that he wants to be. He wants to be a lot happier and carefree, which will be a direct reflection on you. What, what are the types of emotions that you would like to now give him? Joy. Mm hmm. What else? Elation. Mm hmm. Freedom. Mm hmm. How about carefree? Carefree. Mm hmm. And what color would you like to make him? Gray is too dark of a color. Bright purple. Bright purple. A very bright color. All right, so let me speak with him now. Mr. Gray? Yes. Are you ready to transform now into joy, elation, freedom, being carefree, and change yourself from that dark, ugly gray to a bright, bright purple? Yes. All right, so go ahead and let's begin the transformation now. Allow yourself to transform, releasing all of those thoughts and replacing them now. Feeling how joyful you are, happy, elated, almost to the point where you just want to laugh at life. Because everything is just so much fun. And tell me when the transformation has been completed. That's complete. Very good. So what can we call you now that I can't call you Mr. Gray? What would you like to be called instead? Mr. Purple. Mr. Purple. So Mr. Purple, thank you very much. And for the new role that you are now taking in onto Rosie's life, keeping her in a joyous, carefree state, making sure that when she is ready to take on somebody's burden, you make her laugh about it and it slips right off. Can we do that now? Yes. Thank you very much. Take a deep breath in. Let me speak now with the higher self. So how does she look now that she has a Mr. Purple? Lighter. Lighter. Mm-hmm. Very good. Now that she's feeling lighter, she wants to know if she's going to be destined to go through life alone without a companion. She chooses that. Mm -hmm. She likes being on her own? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that something that she should always keep to herself? Or do you anticipate her having a companion now that she's so carefree and fun? She has friends. Mm -hmm. She's not lonely. She wants to be by herself. Okay. So she's made this choice. Yes. Okay. So it's not like she's dragging herself through life mm -hmm. totally on her own. She has her friends. Yes. Good. Good. And now we want to talk about her mom, Barbara. She had a dream that her mom came to her and that her mom forgave her, but she's still holding on to that guilt of not being there when her mom died. What would you like to tell her about that? Let it go. Mm -hmm. It was her choice. It was her mom's choice? Yes. Mm -hmm. But why does she feel so guilty? Her sister was there. Her mother was there a lot for her, mm -hmm. and she felt like that she let her down because she wasn't there when she needed her. Mm -hmm. 
Does Barbara have anything to say about this? Barbara, what would you like to tell your daughter? I love you, Rose. Talk to your daughter. Tell her what she needs to hear today. I understand why you weren't there. It's okay. Do you hold it against her? No. No, I love my daughter. Mm hmm. It almost seems to me, Barbara, that she feels guilty for having to run out on a play at the end when everybody is is uh, bowing to the audience. She saw the whole play, didn't she? Yes. She was there. She didn't need to be there for the final. No. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to tell her? That I love her and it's good, it's all good. Mm-hmm, very good. Take a deep breath in. And Rosie, what would you like to tell your mom? I miss you. Give her a big hug. Give her a big hug. I'm sorry. Barbara, is there anything for her to be sorry about? No. Mm hmm Tell her. You're her mom. Really? You're fine. You did fine. Does she need to carry around this any longer? No. Mm-hmm. She has a lot of stuff inside she's been carrying, hasn't she? Yes. <clears throat> so would you like to tell her to flush that bedpan? Flush it, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to carry that around anymore. It's getting pretty stinky, isn't it? Yep, it all sure this is. guilt, all this suffering for no reason. Show she's her, her daughter's mother. Mm -hmm. She's her mother's daughter. Mm -hmm. She learned that from me. I taught her that. Well, she's she's learned quite a few things from you, from your mother about varicose veins. What would you like to tell her about all that nonsense that she's been pulling around? She'll have to talk to mom about that. Mm-hmm. Anything else that she's carrying around from you that you want to apologize for, Barbara? She says that she sent me to live with my mom, Becky. When I was little. That's <sighs> so history repeats itself. I didn't care. I loved my mama Becky. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, can you forgive your mom? Nothing to forgive. Ah. So you've both been holding on to things about each other that don't need to be held anymore. That's funny. <laughs> Is it all making sense now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're your mother's daughter. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Very good. Is there anything else, Barbara, you'd like to say before we continue? No, I'm happy. Very good. Thank you so much, Barbara, for all the information Thank you. you've given her. Thank you so much. Let me speak now with the higher self. 
Rosie wants to know what she's supposed to be doing as far as her career. Is she supposed to be nursing? Yes. Mm -hmm. How can she make it even happier? She doesn't feel very fulfilled. She looks at her career as a job to pay bills. If she would just be happy doing what she's doing, everything else would take care of itself. Mm -hmm. So she needs to put a little bit more compassion into this? Yes. She, mm -hmm. She's compassionate towards others. She just she gets in her head and thinks too much. Mm -hmm. But she needs more compassion towards herself. Yeah. She just needs to learn to enjoy life more. Mm -hmm. Any more suggestions about her job that would make her happier? She needs to choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. She can't work two full-time jobs very long. Mm -hmm. What's that doing to her? She's always busy doing other things, but she's put her fun stuff behind her to do two jobs. Mm -hmm. Does she need these fun things? She needs it to relax. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Purple is there to help her now. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. So can we help also get some guides for her? I'd like on her behalf to ask for guides that will put more fun into her life. Kind of like Custer was doing, kind of laughing and making her see life as more joyful, more fun to go through, and not just a job and a chore to get through. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. And I would think that as soon as she has more fun, she wouldn't, she won't feel as guilty about things anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Will that make her more successful if she picks one job over the other? Yes, but it'll be a hard choice for her. Mm -hmm. How can we make it a easier choice? We don't want her holding on to guilt like she did with her mom. Remind her she needs to grow. Okay, good. So your purpose in life is to grow. And sometimes growing means that you need to do some pruning. Just like a plant. Sometimes we realize that in order for a shrub to grow even fuller, we need to clip at it. We need to get rid of some of the branches so it gets fuller and grows even better and stronger. Can you see where in your life you can do some pruning? Yes. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and start pruning some of these things so that you understand that once you make those decisions, every bit of pruning will make you grow stronger and happier. Thank you so much for that. Would you do a body scan on her, please? She wants to check in on her health. And tell her what you see. I can't see. Mm-hmm. What's keeping you from seeing? Is there something holding holding that light away from you? Is there something dark there? There's no light. There's no light in her body? No light. Mm-hmm. Where is it the darkest? In her stomach. In her stomach. Is this what's keeping her digestive tract going too slow? Her digestion is very slow. Her body has nerve damage from back. Mm -hmm. From her back. Mm hmm That slows her digestion. Okay. She eats poorly. Mm. She doesn't allow her body to rest. So if you can tell her what it is that she should be eating. Live food. Live food. Mm-hmm. 
Would you give her the best type of live food she be she should be focusing on? Fresh fruits, vegetables. Mm -hmm. Lots of fruit. What is she eating now? She eats food that's not food. Mm hmm. So her body doesn't can't function anymore. Slows it down. Mm hmm. Can I ask on her behalf for any nutrition expert to help her when she goes to eat something that she will be very strongly reminded of this message so that she can begin to start eating live foods yes. that are good for her that will restore her health yes very good so what is happening in the stomach what's that darkness there just slow slow is this this just junk that's in there yes mm -hmm. so can we begin to start working on eliminating that yes all right so I'd like to ask for a nice very powerful spiritual enema <laughs> to begin working on her so that when she will be able to when she leaves here today and goes home that she will begin to release all of this nasty stuff that she's been trying to process in her system and let's put some lubricant in all of her cells so that they will begin to start eliminating all of this toxic waste that she's been poisoning them with. Thank you very much for that. What else do you see in her body besides the food issue? can't see. Mm -hmm. Can you tell her about her varicose veins? What's causing that? Did someone kick her when she was little? No. Mm -hmm. So what's causing that? Does it seem like somebody's holding her down, keeping you from seeing that light? I just don't see. I see her body, but I don't see. It's not illuminated. All right. Where is it the darkest right now? Still in her stomach. All right. Yeah. Let's bring that energy up, 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 up. Good afternoon. You can now express yourself. Are you male or female energy? Male. Male. What may I call you? Nothing. Nothing. So nothing. How long have you been there for with her? A long time. A long time. How old was she? She's forty-seven. Mm-hmm. So have you been there all that time? No. Mm. How long have you been there? Well, twenty years. Mm-hmm. So nothing. Did you have a body before you came here? I don't know. Well, let's look back. Let's look look back and see when the last time was when you had a body. I have her body. Mm, I know. We're not talking about now. We're talking about before. We want to know where you came from. Where'd you come from? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? Were you there a long time? Have you been here a long time? I've been with her a long time. Mm -hmm. And where were you before her? I don't know. Did someone send you to her? No. Did she create you? I don't know. Mm. So nothing. It seems that we're not getting we're not getting anywhere with you. You need a lot of help today. <laughs> it's almost like we need to give you a little bit of a truth serum here. It seems to me you're not telling me the whole truth. I don't know where I came from. No. Oh, so we're dealing with a nothing with amnesia. <laughs> so nothing in order for you to remember a little bit more. Let's do some observations on what you look like. Tell me what you look like inside her stomach. 
black. Black, okay. So even in the blackness of anything that is in our existence, there's always a spark of light there. I want you to look within that blackness and find that spark of light. Tell me when you find it, nothing. It's always there. Tell me when you find that spark. All of creation was made with that spark. I found it. Mm-hmm. So that spark, is it big or little? It's small. All right, so nothing. Let's do a little bit of an exercise here. I want you to make that spark bigger and bigger and tell me how it feels as you make that spark bigger. How does that light look now? Bright. Mm. How does it feel now to be in that light? Oh, it feels better. Mm -hmm. Now that you're in that light, you may remember who you are, where you came from. What do you remember now? I don't remember. Mm. How do you feel now? I feel better. Mm -hmm. So nothing. You came from the all. You came from the creator. But you just turned a little dark, didn't you? Yep. Mm -hmm. Were you feeding off of her? Yep. Mm -hmm. Now as a bright light, you don't need to feed off of her, don't you? No. No. So nothing, now that you are a bright light and feeling great, I'm going to have my angels of the light surround you. And they're going to tell you something and tell me what they relate to you. They say I got to go. Mm -hmm. But before you go, nothing, I want you to look at the rest of her body and ar around the room and tell me if there's any other nothings like you around. Do you have any pals in there with you? No. Just you? Yes. All right. So, nothing now that you are no longer nothing. What would you like to be called? Light. Light. That's a beautiful name. So, Light, I'd like for you to go ahead through the top of her head. Now feel the energy going through the top of her head. And the angels of the light are going to take you home back to the oneness. And I'm going to have my archangels accompany you. Archangel Michael will take you right back to the light and tell me what you find there. More light. More light. So now light, you can fuse yourself in with the others and you can make yourself as powerful as you need to be. As bright a light as you need to be. You don't need to feed off of anybody anymore. You have now the source Thank to power you. you. Thank you. May the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you very much. And now let me speak with the higher self. Hello. So now that her light has been illuminated, can you tell me how her stomach looks now? It's brighter. It's brighter. What about the rest of her body? How do you see it now? Are there any other nothings in there? Any other darkness affecting her? Her body is dark. Her whole dark body is dark? Mm-hmm. There's no light. There's no light anywhere. Okay, so let's find out where the rest of that stuff is. Where else do you see the darkness? It's just no light. There's no darker. Mm -hmm. At this point, there's no darker or lighter. Okay. So I'm going to call in the archangels now to help. Would you allow that, please? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to call in my team to come in. And also the angels of the light, angels of the blue flame, and, and the warrior angels. And I want Archangel Michael to throw his net of white light all around Rosie's body. Feel her body totally encapsulated in his beautiful white net. And I want him to go ahead and use his sword, Blue Flame, to go through his the whole body and totally fill you with that blue light. And as he does that, I'm going to have Archangel Raphael do the healing as he 
begins to illuminate your body with the sword of blue flame taking out all of that darkness from your toes all the way to your head and as the other archangels are standing by putting in all of their energy and all of the other angels are there to also help totally illuminating your body from head to toe from toe to head every cell of your body Tell me, report back and tell me what you're feeling or sensing. Just calm. Mm, beautiful. Very good. Feel that calmness as all of that darkness is eliminated, replaced by the light every cell of your body getting brighter and brighter. I want you to go ahead and see that beautiful, brilliant white light above you and bring it into your body through the crown of your head. Totally filling your body now. And then grounding you to Mother Earth. feeling the calm and now as the higher self would you take a look at her body and see how it looks now that's better very good what would make it even better mm. does she need to work on this with her meditation it would help all right so I'd like for her to, as she does her meditation, to do this same meditation of bringing that light in every day, grounding her to Mother Earth, encapsulating all of her cells with that brilliant white light, and calling in on the angels to help her. And as she brings it in, I want her to imagine that bedpan being filled up with all of that darkness each time and dumping it every single day. Anytime she brings in anything into her body, her mind, her soul, to be able to flush it every single day, not carrying it with her. She has a question about laser surgery that she's planning to do on her veins. What would you like to tell her about that? She can do it. Mm-hmm. Good. Can we ask Archangel Raphael to help her in the healing process? Yes. Thank you very much. What about her allergies? What is that all about? It's her diet. Her diet. Good. So most of these issues are her diet? Yes. Mm-hmm. Good. Anything else that you would like to tell her that we haven't asked today? She knows. She mm -hmm. knows she needs to rest more. Mm-hmm. What she kind of rest? Sleep. Mm -hmm. How many hours does she need? She doesn't need as much as most, but she does need mm -hmm. like four or five hours a day. Okay. Would that help her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do you have any other comments or suggestions that you would like to make today? She needs to eat. She needs to eat. She's hungry. Okay, good. <laughs> well, we'll make sure that after she leaves here that she goes to somewhere where she gets good, nice live food. <laughs> nice and green. Lots of fruits and vegetables. Are we complete today? Yes. Very good. Very good. Wide awake feeling. Oh, my gosh. All over. How do you feel? I think I crushed your <laughs> You did well. Are they hot? Wow, they're on fire. So tell me how you feel. How was it? I feel good. You feel good? I, <clears throat> so I what think was my ego was getting in the way because I told her one time go down, go ah. sit down and shut up. <laughs> uh-huh. So 
How was this experience for you? You, you had one. You had another experience before, and this one was awesome. Mm-hmm. What was different about it? I don't know. I mean, it was. Uh, we actually went through it. Yeah. And no panic attack. No, no anxiety. <laughs> Everything was nice and loving. We got rid of a lot of, a lot of doo doo today. Yeah. Uh huh. So, is this something that you want to share? Yeah, you think it'll help other people? I don't know how it help, it'll help them, but it helped me. Mm-hmm. How do you feel? How's your body feel? I feel better. Like that heavy feeling is gone. Mr. Gray. Yeah. He's now Mr. Purple, and he's having. He's gonna. He's gonna make you dance. He's gonna make you <laughs> laugh and. My my papa was there, and when I was a little girl, he used to always grab me up, and he would beard me like yeah. he would rub his beard on and me. And he's doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. How long do you feel you were on this journey? Mm, maybe thirty minutes. An hour and ten minutes. Really? Mm-hmm. It didn't seem very long. It seemed pretty good. So was it worth it? Yes. All right. Terrific. Well, we did it. We did it. <laughs> so, how was it for you? It was good. Yeah. And, yeah. It's very relaxing and calming, and I'm smiling. <laughs> you are. Now, when you first saw me, you were like almost in a panic attack. Mm-hmm. So, tell everybody how you felt when you got here. Um, I was anxious when I first got here, but uh-huh. it, you're very calm and calming, and. Mm-hmm. Um, made me feel relaxed and at ease. And what was it that made you feel so relaxed before the session? I think just your voice and your, your demeanor. You're mm-hmm. very calming. And we had discussed that you had had a session before. Mm-hmm. So what was the difference? Um, what do you think was the, the difference in it? I think that I trusted you more mm-hmm. just to begin with. Mm-hmm. And you're very, you explained everything yeah. and made me feel at ease. and. I knew what to expect. Cool, cool. And, uh, you know, before I do any of these sessions, I do explain what hypnosis is and isn't so that people understand. I want people to be um, really co-creators with me on this experience. This is what it's all about. When you know what's going to happen, when you know that really this all hypnosis is self-hypnosis, you yourself are putting yourself in that state. I mean, I didn't do anything to you. You basically put yourself in that relaxed state. So that's a big difference when you know that you're in control. Mm -hmm. And most people think that they're not in control. Did you feel you were in control? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the time. So what did hypnosis feel like for you? Uh, Just like a very relaxed state of being. Yeah. Did you feel you were here? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you know what was happening around you? Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. But you were still... Yeah, still... Yeah. Where I was. Yes. In hypnosis, you're you're totally conscious. You're alert. You know where you are. You're not going anywhere. Um, you 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 know what's happening. You can hear noises around you, but they don't bother you. You could censor if you wanted to, because you're talking. There's no nobody taking over your mouth. So whatever it is that you're saying, you are saying it yourself. It's not like you're being possessed by anything. And I think that's what really makes people feel comfortable is knowing that you're always in hypnosis all the time you know every time you get in your car you're checking out and you're daydreaming and this is what it was like right Mm -hmm. but these words were not yours they were coming from somewhere else so explain what the higher self felt like just smart calm (laughs) wise like yeah way wiser than me (laughs) but it was you (laughs) yeah yeah that's your higher self so uh do you recommend this to other people yes Definitely. You feel good, huh? Yes. Wonderful. I feel light, like just like I'm off a little away. That's the way it be. So wonderful. Down yeah, you'll be fine, and you need to eat something too to ground you after this. So, if you would like a session with me, um, you can go to my website, albaweinman.com. And right now, we are in the Cincinnati, Ohio area. How far did you drive? Uh, about an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, you're in Louisville, right? Mm-hmm. And we're right now in Florence, Kentucky. And I do travel all around. So if you would like to sign up for my lo- newsletter, you can go to my website, uh, the Out of Town page. Sign up so that I know where you are. Make sure you put your address on there so that I know where you are, so that I can figure out you know, which cities I should go to next. And then hopefully, if I come by a city near you, you can sign up very quickly because not... You'll, yeah. you'll miss out. The sessions are filled fast. They feel very fast. So I hope you enjoyed this session. Until the next time, bye. bye.
Thank you.